Um, I wanted to thank the Royal Allenberg Center for Human Rights for inviting the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom for you, sir, to participate in this important event. It is truly an honor to join you all, uh, especially in my new capacity as a USERF commissioner. For many of us who work on human rights promotion as government officials, uh, Raul uh, Wallenberg is something of patron saint. Uh, as I am sure many of you know, uh, Wallenberg served as a Swedish diplomat in Budapest during World War II when Hungary was occupied by the Nazis. Rather than standing by, he used his authority to issue protective passports to European Jews. He also sheltered Jews in the buildings designated as Swedish territory. Historians estimated that he say, saved tens of thousands of men and women and children from what later come to known as the Holocaust. Unfortunately, Wallenberg himself disappeared after the Soviet occupation of Budapest. However, his legacy lives on. Uh, Representative Tom Lentos, a longtime champion of human rights in the US Congress, was one of those young Jews saved by Wallenberg. Lentos played an important role in creating USERF through the International Religious Freedom Act of 1998. He was an important partner in our work before his unfortunate passing in 2008. So in a sense, USERF may not exist, but but for Raoul Wallenberg's bravery. USERP was created to address exactly the type of religious freedom abuses that Wallenberg challenged and that Representative Lantos endured. We are an independent government commission created by Congress in order to elevate and promote religious freedom around the world. We do, by, we do this by monitoring and reporting on religious freedom conditions in dozens of countries, including China, and by making policy recommendations to the White House, State Department, and Congress. Our commission has been warning about religious freedom violations in China from the very beginning. In our very first annual report published in 1999, we condemned the Chinese government's crackdown on independent religious groups. Even at that time, you serve, uh, warned the US government not to ignore human rights and freedom of religion in China. As the earlier panel have noted, the situation has only worsened, gotten worse since then. Millions of Uyghur Muslims in concentration camps, an Orwellian surveillance state has been uh, built and managed. Organ harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners are, are still in practice. Nighttime rape against house churches is still being um, uh, practiced by the Chinese government. Expelling thousands of Tibetan monks and nuns from the their monasteries are still uh, happening as we speak. The scale of China's repression would be unfathomable uh, if I did not know so many people personally affected by it. Sometimes while reading about these developments, I find myself wondering if there are any Wallenbergs in China quietly working to mitigate the repression. Mm -hmm. I'm sure many of you saw the report by the New York Times last November about the leaked Chinese government documents from the Uyghur region. The report described the chilling details how Chinese government created the largest concentration camp network in the world since World War II. That report was only possible because the Chinese government official leaked more than 400 pages of official documents to journalists. This unnamed official risked his or her life and liberty in order to ensure that Xi Jinping and other Chinese leaders would not escape responsibility for their crimes. The leaked documents discuss another Chinese official, uh, Wang Yuzhi, a former Chinese Communist Party boss of uh, Yerkeng County in, in, uh, as part of the Kashka Prefecture. Mr. Wang was initially went along with the government's crackdown of Uyghurs. At some point, however, he had a change of heart and released 7,000 internees from the camps in his jurisdiction. Mr. Wang warned uh, his superior that the government's ruthless assault on Uyghur Muslims did not reflect the realities on, uh, on the ground. He also reportedly told the party officials that he was not, he was nothing, uh, he was, there was nothing wrong with having Quran at home. He even encouraged them to read it in order to better understand the Uyghur culture. Rather than heed his advice, Chinese government 
Communist Party, strip him of power, and persecuted him. Nor is, Wang, uh, nor, nor is Mr. Wang alone. The Times reported that thousands of government officials in Xinjiang were uh, punished for resisting or failing to carry out the crackdown, uh, quote unquote, sufficient zeal. What can the United States do to encourage any remaining uh, Raul Wallenberg or Wang Yu in the Uyghur region to act on the better angel of their nature? One approach would be to impose financial sanction and visa bans under the Global Magnitsky Act against those Chinese officials responsible for the mass internment of Uyghurs and other Muslim, uh, Turkic Muslims in the region. Fortunately, the Uyghur Human Rights Act, which Congress passed last month, directs the administration to do just that. I urge uh, President Trump, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, to put two names on top of that list. First, uh, Chen Chuanggu, the current Communist Party Secretary in Xinjiang and former Secretary of Tibet. The second, Zhu Hailun, the former Xinjiang Political and Legal Affairs Commission uh, Chief, who happened to be the key architect of the concentration camp system. Doing so will send a message to the anonymous leakers and other Wang Yunjus in the Chinese bureaucratic system who would be willing to risk their lives and who will not be doing so in vain. The world will hold these responsible for those crimes accountable. In addition, it's incredibly important that we try to, we try to document the actions of lower level Chinese officials. We need to keep track of those who committed abuses and who resist. The State Department's Office of Global Justice, Criminal Justice and the Holocaust Memorial Museum are well positioned to act as research hubs for this effort. Perhaps one day this information will be used in trials to hold those responsible for these crimes against humanity accountable. History will remember who stayed in silent, who took a stand against the Communist Party's war on faith. We have to make a, con a concrete progress during the, we have made concrete progress during the past few years, but that is not enough. It will take many more years of long hard work to see justice for the Uyghur people, Tibetan Buddhists, Christians, and Falun Gong practitioners in China. As we, as we do so, we should never forget the example of Raul Wallenberg, who provided that one person can make a difference. Thank you very much for the opportunity.